Hi everyone, Ross Satchel from Microchip back again. This is the first video in a series of setting up the ATtiny1627 from the Tiny2 family of AVR microcontrollers and its peripherals using bare metal programming. But before we go any further, we need to define what bare metal programming is. Bare metal refers to a computer operating without any abstraction layers where it is executing its instructions directly on logic hardware, which are the microcontroller's registers. At this level of programming, the primary references tend to be the device datasheet and header files. But then what are registers? Registers are simply locations in memory that we can write to or read from. Because of this, bare metal programming is also sometimes known as register-level programming. Now that we've covered that, let's go over what we're going to do in this first video. We are going to go over the basics of bare metal programming using the datasheet and a tech brief which explains much of the nomenclature of interacting directly with registers. So let's get started. Open MPLAB X and then connect your ATtiny1627 Curiosity Nano to your computer confirming that the kit window appears. If it doesn't appear and you either see this screen with the message no kit connected or the kit window tab does not open in the main pane, you may need to install the device family pack or DFP. To do that, click tools, packs. Then click on the checkbox next to the latest version of ATtiny DFP. Then click the install or uninstall packs button and then select Install Pack Updates from the drop-down list. My DFP is already installed to the latest version, so I will continue on. In the kit window, there are some external links, kit information, and design files. For now, I'm most interested in the datasheet under External Links. So let's click on that, and it opens up in our browser. Now we've got the datasheet, there's also another very useful resource in the form of a tech brief, TB3262, getting started with writing C code for AVR MCUs. Link in the description below. So let's open that now. To get us started, we will just look at the first two sections, but we will be referring to this tech brief frequently throughout this series. So in TB3262, starting from the introduction, it talks about how a programming language alone does not ensure high readability and reusability, but good coding style does. It goes on to say that the AVR MCU peripherals, header files, and drivers are designed according to this presumption. Then if we go to section 1, it talks about how the first step in writing C code for a microcontroller is to know what kinds of information there are in the datasheet. The datasheet contains information about the features, memories, the core, and the peripheral modules of the microcontroller, the functional description of the peripheral modules, the peripheral's base address, the names and addresses of the registers, and other functional and electrical characteristics. Then in section 1.3, it talks about the different kinds of modules and how they're broken down into smaller parts. Looking at figure 1.2, it shows us that a module is broken down into submodules which are numerically ordered starting at 0 and going up to the number of modules, minus 1, since we started counting from 0. Each submodule is then broken down into registers, and then each register consists of 8 bits, numbered from 0 to 7. Then in figure 1-3, it gives an example of the ADC register summary, which has the names of the registers, the number of bits in that register, and the bit position names. Section 1.4 talks about register naming conventions, such as labeling multiple general purpose registers alphabetically, and it gives the example of control registers for a module being named control A, control B, and so on. Then we have registers with special functions having names that reflect their functionality, and it gives the example of an interrupt control register for a given module having the name int control. Most registers are 8-bit, but there are some that are larger and they're made up of multiple 8-bit registers. For example, the ADC result register is broken down into ADC result high and ADC result low registers. In most cases, we can just refer to a single register 
which would be the ADC result register, ADC res, without specifying the high or low byte. The same principle applies for 32-bit registers. Then we have bit and bit field naming conventions, in which the bit names are abbreviations of the full bit name, and then the example of the ADC having an enable bit in the control A register. Then there is bit field naming conventions, in which multiple bits are grouped together for a common purpose, and the example of the ADC control C register having the three least significant bits being used to select the prescaler, since there are eight possible settings to choose from. Then section 1.5 covers configuration change protection or CCP registers. The CCP registers are used to protect system critical I.O. register settings from accidental modification, as well as flash self-programming from accidental execution. It goes on to say that there are two types of rights to a CCP register. There's rights to protected I.O. registers with the key I.O. reg, and rights to protected self-programming registers with the key SPM. In the table it shows, for example, that if we wanted to select the clock source and to output the clock, we would use the CCP for the clock control module named Main Clock Control A. Section 1.2 covers fuses, which hold the device configuration and we will return to these later on in the video series. Then section 2 is about how modules are represented in header files. It explains that if the device has been selected when creating the project, then the header file for that device will automatically be included in the main.c file. All of the register and structure definitions, as well as macros for the device, are in that header file. With all of that in mind, join me in the next video in this series where we will set up our oscillator and clock. Bye for now and see you in the next video.